Okay, I'm here, I'm here. How you doing that, Doom? Good to have you, my man. Good to see you. Um, I started the stream and then realized I need to change the Ethernet cable. I don't know how it happened, but my Ethernet cable, I don't know, snapped in half. <laughs> I don't know how it happened, because there's literally no strain on the thing. It just, I just looked down one day, it was just literally in half. I don't even know how that happens, but it happened. Uh, so I just got rid of that today, and then we got the new one. So here we are. Uh, but yeah, to answer your question about Doom, um, he sent it back rather quickly, <laughs> which is actually pretty shocking. I only sent that thing about... When did I send it? I sent it so... When did I send it? It wasn't that long ago, my god. Um... Yeah, like what? Four hours ago? That's pretty metal. Okay, well. <laughs> I'm just going to see what time my classes are tomorrow. And that will dictate how much time we have on this. Okay. Ten o'clock. Nice. Nice. -o. Nice. -o. Yep, okay. We'll get into this then. Uh, so, yep, just the positions. So I named the uh, turn change of position, so <laughs> he's gone for that. Uh, it's interesting, though, because he did reply, so he put on his email saying, uh, China uh, is a lost cause, and I'm like, I don't know what he's done in China. I don't I don't know what his his aim has been there. Very strange. Uh, so we are going to go in for a bombardment of Wake with two heavy cruisers running full speed with five DDs in support. They're all 35 knotters. Now, I'm prepared to lose the CAs, which I wouldn't like to do, uh, but what I'm expecting to happen is he will likely send in his own bombardment task force. That's what I'm expecting. So I'm expecting that will probably engage or be engaged. If not, we bombard, get the hell out. Looks like we're bombarded. Yeah, we like bombardments. How are you doing there, Brass? Okay. Now, in theory, I can feel my heart beating like crazy. <laughs> this uh, this game gives me such anxiety. Um, but in theory, we should be able to move from Tongi, which we have done, to Wake, which is 9 hexes. And then these guys should, in theory, make 10 hexes per face, because they're running full, and they're all 35 knotters. So they should then be able to return back to Tongi in a single turn. So far, it's looking about right. Uh, how you doing there, Parmentier? We just started. And it started with a bombardment, and we destroyed a Catalina on the ground. Oh, <laughs> I'm happy about that. Okay, uh, a couple hits here on the base. I mean, I didn't have anybody set to sport because I thought that would actually engage something, to be honest. There's still time, I guess. We'll see. Um. Okay. I, I didn't send the B, uh, DDs to bombard. Um, frankly, because I don't think it's much worthwhile. Uh, a lot of them have low ammunition, in fact. I think most of them have maybe two ammo, maybe less. We can double check. Then I think they're single guns. Uh, to be honest, I, I kind of expected there just to be a engagement, in all honesty. <laughs> That's kind of what I was expecting. Uh, so why did I bombard with EDs? Probably makes of low ammunition. Assuming they die or end up in a fight. Uh, I guess I could have had the DDs bombard in retrospect. Okay, speed that up. Yeah, these light cruisers don't do a huge amount. And these light cruisers have larger guns than their DDs do. They do have a lot of them, though, in fairness. It's like having a couple uh, regiments of artillery. Is it regiments of artillery? Yeah. I think so. How are you doing there, Connor? Ah, uni. Ah, it's going. It's going. Certainly is going. It's a better semester than it was in the first one, so that's good. That's good. Gotta stay positive. Okay. 
I was pretty bloody shocked that we got in and bombarded Wake and, in theory, got out too. Okay. I hope they withdraw. They are set to retirement allowed. So they are set to retire. Uh, I don't know, maybe they bombard again. I mean, we're still in the night phase? I don't know, maybe they'll bombard again. Hmm. I mean, these guys are bombarded again. It's the night phase, isn't it? Is it? <laughs> this is the night phase, right? Allied ships near side pad. Uh, doubtful. Maybe. Maybe like submarines or something like that. Yeah, night naval bombardment. Okay. Right. Uh, so they were buzzed by something then. Engine room open to the sea. Not a good thing, as you'd imagine. Yeah, don't worry about that doom. Uh, you tend to see it quite often. It could be detecting our own ships as well. That's a thing to remember though. We do have really good moonlight as well. That's really quite nice. It was good to take out a Catalina on the ground though. I mean, it'd be kind of cool if we got a second bombardment in. Ah, oh, that's cool. That's cool. I'm glad to hear about that, Connor. Continue to offload over here, but I do feel that we have to be quite careful. I feel like there's going to be some sort of response come in very soon. We do have detection out from Tarawa. Oh, that squad destroyed by Hopefully they do have another squad to take that base, otherwise it's a bit of a waste of time. But I guess we'll see. So many dot bases here to capture. So bloody many of them. That was a bit of a pain in the ass to capture though. I can't seem to capture that one. I tried a few times though. Okay, we're bearing ships. I really hope those heavy cruisers retire. They should retire. Sometimes I have no faith. <laughs> uh, DMSW10 doing good there. How you doing there, Sand Pebble? Good to have you, my man. Ah, uh, second torpedo hits. Oh, 20. Okay. Yeah, we're playing an interesting game out here with the PBs. Probably gonna go down, yep. Uh, okay, so they're on their way back. I'm hoping that they'll move further than that. They do have some LRCAP set over them. I'm hoping that will help. But I just want them to get back, so pray to God they get back. Hmm, okay, so we spot some ships out there. Interesting. Okay. Attacking an enemy uh, submarine out there. Right, okay. Oh, the Vindicator there. Ah, okay. So he does have cap over it. Now, that's annoying. There was meant to be a escort. Yeah, uh, I did set an escort from in your top, so that's a shame. So I guess we'll lose a couple bombers. Quite a few bombers. Quite a lot of bombers. That's really not good. There should have been an escort. I expected an escort from Kid of a Tide, but I guess it is what it is. Damn, that was not nice. Oh, what a pain. What an absolute pain. Yeah, that cost us. Ugh, oh, that's annoying. Yeah, I expected um, escorts from the Kid of a Tie. That's what I was expecting. I did anticipate him to have uh, aircraft, but I guess he was LRCA for me, didn't he? Oh well, oh well. Uh, 
I was hoping I would have had an escort, but that's okay. I mean, I should have put a sweep in there, but then Millis and Six, isn't it? If you do the turns, you don't always think about every, 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 every possibility. Yeah, I'm likely going to have to use those. I do have some paratroopers in uh, Java as well, actually, to use. So we can definitely use those. And I do have some transports I'll be able to move shortly as well, to be helpful. Okay, 220 casualties here. I'm just going to continue to bomb these guys, or we'll have the opportunity to do so. These guys, as far as I'm aware, don't seem to be moving. Yeah, okay. So we've learned a valuable piece of information there. Should have swept. I forgot to sweep. Damn. Surprised that there was no escort open at the time. There were two groups of G3s. Maybe they went in together. Maybe they're going in one at a time. We'll see. Yeah, well, losing G3s ain't good. We still have enough to pose the threat, so that's always something. And we do have G3s so that can place them with, so... Ah, take it as is. They shouldn't be bombing there, but they are apparently. They should be set to bomb here in check. But okay. I mean, this has been tremendously good for our experience game here. But I still can't fathom why he's in here. Yeah, 268 casualties. That's a lot of dis uh, disabled there. It's a lot of disabled. Yep. I miss the days we used to hit aircraft here. I don't really. <laughs> I'm glad that is as it is. Yeah, I'll be attacking here soon and in Shang. He's got two cores there. Oh, uh, the one DD that was spotted near Wake is one that was really heavily damaged. Oh, that's cool, Helson. Have fun, man. Who is it they play with? Interesting they bombed the troops here. I think he might have just set them to just ground attack. Chicago 227. I feel like I might have seen that name before. That's pretty cool though. I hope you have a lot of fun, my man. Are you playing the uh, American? Sorry, are you playing as the Allies? Are you playing as the uh, Japanese? Ah, that's cool. Yeah, I don't think I'd be able to play as the Allies. I guess you enjoy who you enjoy, really. Moving into the PM. I'm collecting the actual submarines near uh, Tulagi. And we're going to have them going in as a single group against the um, ships down there. Oh yeah, Marauder. That's cool. Hello, Marauder. He sure knows a lot about one of these. And I promise that I'll actually learn more about one of these too. <laughs> when it comes out. Yeah, we do have troops on the way for Paul Moresby. I think I'm going to have them land a boon on a walk across. I've been umming and ahhing about whether to um, have them actually just land previously, but without the actual landing bonus, it's really not, not much of a point there. Uh, so yeah, we'll have them walk across from Boona. That makes a lot more sense, really. O20, the slayer of many of our PB. Okay, so turn so far, we've lost quite a few aircraft. But that's not too bad. It sucks, don't get me wrong, but um, it's been a while since we lost a lot of G3, so we do have them. So we can work with that. It reveals some pretty good information, though. But it gives some kills. Obviously, he's gained some experience there, but I mean, this is it. Should have swept. But uh, I thought we'd have had an escort. Okay. 
yeah, well, that's it, exactly, Doom. And I do have every submarine in the area head into that area as well. Um, I think we should have some information about where he is as well, so that'd be quite good. Okay. But it looks like the cruiser uh, idea works quite well then, though. Especially if I've not, it's doing pretty good, so... If we can get in and out there, that's really good. But, I mean, we hit weight and we destroyed one of the PBYs there, so that's quite nice. Have you tried, uh... No, I, I know I can attack a Kianko. I can likely win a Kianko. I'm just happy with the situation as it is at this moment in time. Uh, what I want to do is actually secure a Chang and build up the airfield over here at Sian. And essentially have the bombers be able to really, really pound him. So what I'll do is have the bombers just essentially bomb him day in, day out. Uh, while we have our forces taking the south down here. This situation is one that we can win. But I'm happy with attacking him for now. If I kick him out of here, he may have forces to retreat here, or they may retreat this way. And then we have to fight on towards Chungking. I'd rather be in a position of decent strength, which we kind of are, but I'm waiting for three of reinforcements. We have reinforcements about here. They're going to be crossing to here in a couple days, and then I'll launch a deliberate attack, wait for reinforcements to arrive, and then we can probably push on from there. In the meantime, though, I'm happy to just keep on punishing them. Exactly. And I could likely take a chunk. I probably will attack very soon, actually, considering that there's, there should be just two cores here. I was kind of hoping that they'd continue uh, march out of here, but we'll attack probably uh, this tank coming in, actually. I do worry about the strength of our forces here due to the amount of disabled, but I guess we'll have to go for it. But we do have plenty of support from bombers, so I can imagine they're not in the best situation right now. Okay. In terms of core strength, he does have a few cores here, but you can see their strength has been diminished day in, uh, from day in, day out bombardment. Yeah, 317 there. That's a pretty good bombardment as it goes. Okay, his strength might be slightly up actually, or it might have just been over-reported or under-reported beforehand. Ours is pretty good. Um, I may wait for the reinforcements to get here and then attack. I may go for that. We'll attack soon enough. I mean, there will be an attack coming, it's just really at what point I wish to launch it. 154 versus 46, and we do capture Wasu. And they retreat towards Kashgar. In the most annoying way they could possibly have gone. Irritating. I was hoping they could have just destroyed that unit there. But that's okay. That's fine. Uh, hopefully we can get a unit sent up that way. And then we'll be good to go. Yeah, uh, 716 casualties. That's more or less wipe the unit out. Shock attack maybe would have been better, but eh. yeah, here we go. 185, 199. So I'll attack these guys next turn then. I just worry about these divisions having a lot of disabled. But we should have enough firepower. We should have enough support from the bombers to be able to really just kick them out without much of the wave issue. Yeah, especially with them taking that sort of damage there. Yeah, 582. I should be able to win that, no problem. I just have a little bit of fear regarding divisions with lots of disabled. Uh, this one I'm just going to keep on bombarding so I can get enough strength. They should they should dwindle soon enough. Especially as we hold all these here. And soon enough we'll hold the Changshire area. And then they're just going to be limited to what supplies in this area. I do need to take Pakoi as well. There we are. Oh, he's actually attacking us. So, um, will we hold at Wake? I don't know. Um, probably not. I guess we'll see. I'd like them to survive, but I, I, I don't know. I doubt. Yeah, they're gone. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah, that's a shame. So there's a the regiment gone there. Ah, that's a big shame. Ah, uh, oh well. It's not ouchy, really. I mean, it's a loss of a regiment, but how many units have we destroyed? We've destroyed the division of his, so... <laughs> That's one of those. It sucks though. It sucks. Had we had a little bit more time. But I mean, it can't be said that we didn't try this turn. We sent bombs in to try and bomb on the ground. We've got a bomb armor off. Just not enough. Uh, minor supply. That's good to know. Yeah, I know, Grim. I know. But I mean, this is it. Like, how many men did. <laughs> Ship and lose. They lost a lot. <laughs> so we're alright, we can manage. 
Hey, do not mind. Good to have you, my man. Yeah, as Paul says, the attack up can supply a minus. I'm hoping that they didn't gain too much from supply, uh, uh, Japanese supply that we had on the island. I'm not too sure. Yeah, I'd hope that they might have been able to hold out another turn. But I suppose it is what it is. Other than that, it's been alright. I was quite happy they've got the bombardment in at least. At least it shows that it is possible. The loss of those bombers kind of sucks, but... Yeah. At least it shows that he is LR Cap in it. I mean, that's one of the things we hadn't actually tried against it. It did look like we actually do have locations of where his ships are, so that's good. Now, the interesting thing is, is he going to keep his carriers nearby Wake? I'm quite happy to maintain something of an attrition campaign, and I think we can do that. We do have Kida Patai. I think they're still undertaken at this moment in time. I'm sending AKE's um, supply there. Yeah, so they would have arrived there this turn. That's the eternal regret of this campaign, not taking Wake. But hey, he's a good player. Yeah. Um, I'm glad that we got the additional damage there. Looks like we got the last aircraft that was on Wake. Didi's over here is interesting. Okay. So we do see his carrier group over here then. You can see that we do have the submarines actually beginning to <laughs> assemble over here. Uh, I'm quite happy to do that. He does have decent ASW because they do, uh, he does have some... Is it the Clemson class or something like that? Is it, is it a class of DD uh, that can be converted to an APD? And I think they get some pretty damn good ASW assets. But he only has so much ASW. Tanks in this game... Sorry, tanks. Uh, submarines in this game are actually really kind of tanky. Sometimes they aren't, and then other times they can... Well, majority of the time they can take an absurd amount of punishment. So I'm going to use that, essentially just have them go in there. We have the benefit of actually knowing where his carriers are, so that's useful. He's keeping his actual subs around here, but we do have better ASW detection, which is very useful. Ships arriving back down here. So we can consider that another failure, which is kind of annoying, but eh, it is what it is. He's a good player. He's playing this very well. I'm hoping that we can actually turn this against him and play a attrition game. Uh, not seeing a lot of aircraft there, but seeing fighters, bombers, and auxiliary does indicate there's at least a carrier there. That's interesting. I wonder what he's doing with those. Now let me do, uh, double check the range here from Twangi to Wake. Uh, oh, I need to save the game reopening, actually. It's kind of weird sometimes. Okay. 31st of March. Yeah, Wake's been the one area that we haven't achieved what we wanted to. <laughs> but I mean, it just shows you how dangerous the Wake area can be if the Allied player is willing to play that way. But, I mean, this is it. We should have had a Pearl Harbor attack, but that never happened. So the carriers should have been in a different position to the positions that we found ourselves in. Um, let's see. Juxtaposition. Exactly. No, but I'm fairly happy with it today. Uh, did you get a fraction of the regiment at Awake? Um, doubtful. I don't think I got any of them out, because I assumed that we might have been able to hold on a little longer, actually. But a regiment is just about as expensive as it is. I suppose one way to look at it is we'll have plenty of additional forces available from China one day. Um, how much does it actually cost? Uh, that wasn't a full tank regiment. Still sucks. Uh, is it right click? Oh, is it 478? Or is that how many points we have right now? I always forget how this screen works. I don't often use it. Not defined. What does that mean? Twenty-three political points. Okay, sure. Not defined is kind of weird. Okay. Still doing good on the score. Yeah, if we take a look at uh, Japanese army losses. Yeah, so we're at 517 here. His army losses then, 9,991. Chinese are going to be nice. You have to view the unit clicking. That's so weird. That's such a weird way to have things work out. Why would it be like that? That's so bizarre. <laughs> I honestly can't. That's so bizarre. So bizarre. But okay, thanks for that, Yeah, okay. 
Carry on. Uh, aircraft losses were not good. Oof. Oof, that hurts. But we do have ones. Oh, uh, we actually managed to have... Okay, so we lost two Buffalo Bear. Uh, Catalina, Seagulls, a float plane. Those were ops. Okay. Well, the good news is we know that if we sweep over Wake, we're likely to encounter some resistance here. Yeah. That's true. Okay. Let's take a look. Uh, not as many as we did. It looks like these guys either didn't fly or they had reserves. We do have 21 in the pool here, so we can replace them. Uh, looks like it was this group that took the punishment, but they were only 12 to begin with. So I think we had some reserves there. Yeah, we lost the pilots. The pilot lost this episode. Uh, Ah, uh, it is what it is. I got that AO. That was the AO that was there at Hongi, but we moved that out. Now... <laughs> He'd been waiting to say that for a long time, having you there for. <laughs> you nasty man. Okay, so surface combat 7. Oh wow, they arrived here. I wonder, did they take... I wonder if they took fire from the coastal defense guns then, perhaps. Or even maybe from uh, naval surge. But, I mean, they've arrived here. I mean, some of them have got zero, but, well, they made it. Oh, that one had ammunition. I think I might have thought that less of them did ammunition. I thought more of them didn't. Oh, oh no, they've actually been rearmed, haven't they? Oh, yeah, that's why. They've been rearmed when they've arrived, that's why. Okay. If you have units from the same division on the map, you can select the HQ the units arrive in. Usually the main units are sent to restricted command instead of the original. Oh, okay. So... Oh, so if I understand that correctly then, I think the unit it was part of was from here, from Java. Is it 56? 31st? Uh, one of them. Sixteenth division? Ah, yeah, there we go. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, now you can change it. Okay, cool. Thank you very much for letting me know that. So, fourteenth. Army. Fourteenth army. Twenty-three points. Okay. How are you doing there, rolling? Darwin's an interesting one. We are going to move in towards that. Seeing ships out here. Looks like it might be potentially building that up. Yeah, Darwin's going to be an interesting one. Oh, I tell you what, I forgot to move the Haruna over here. Yeah, I had this guy. <laughs> I was looking at the Haruna when I was working on the turn about four hours ago, which is actually rather amazing. And I'm like, oh yeah, I'm going to move you. And then I forgot to move her. So, <laughs> whoops. Uh, what I'm going to do, though, is we do have a slower BBs over here. Like the... Nagato class, and what I'm going to do is have them moved up here to Rabal. And then I'm going to take the actual five heavy cruisers and have them swatch around here to Tuangi. Uh, what I'll do is keep the faster BBs. But essentially, what I want to do is have this be more of an economical campaign. We've clearly been able to see then that the heavy cruisers, at least the 35 knots, can get into Wake and then they can get out back to Tuangi in a single turn. So that's actually pretty useful. We can see there is over here. We can see there is actually set up to attack anything over here, so that's cool. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> exactly. I can do the same thing with the tank regiment uh, if it's not part of the tank division. That's a good point. Thank you very, very much there. Oh, it'll be um, on the arriving screen, won't it? Ground reinforcements. I don't know what unit they would be part of, actually. They're a weird regiment. I can't remember what one they would be a part of. I'll have them changed out to something more useful than if we could figure it out. Second division? Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I'll have to double check that, actually. And then we can change that over. Right. So... Ship losses, then. PB. 
Yeah, just the PB event. Uh, and all honestly, that went a lot better than I imagined. So what's the distance here? Nine. Okay. Ah. Oh, I thought that we were a little bit closer to Wake than we were. That's fine. No, so we had a bit of a bombardment over here in Wake, but not enough to really prevent that attack from being too strong. We did see that his AV was actually lower, but I suppose this is the thing here, isn't it? Um, he still had quite a bit of AV to play with. It was about 180, though, when we landed. And that was about, what, was it about 100-ish? I was kind of praying that we would be able to hold, but yeah. <laughs> Down. Yeah, he's really overstacked at Wake. He's been. Wake's really been his position. But what we're going to try to do then is essentially turn that against him. Oh, he's got some really good detection out here. Holy moly, look how good that ASW is. He still doesn't detect all of them. And the pack is coming. That's okay. I just need to drive him out of the area. AVD down here. Isn't that amazing that the actual first turn that we start moving to actually concentrate our subs to actually go in, he actually moves. But that's actually really intriguing there. MC, AMC, AMC. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, Christ, it's not for lack of trying. <laughs> we have had some uh, mistakes made, though. But he's also a ballsy player. I suppose the thing is, um, I do believe that we will get way. He's just made it really difficult. He's put a lot of mines onto it. He's put a lot of troops onto it. He's obviously got his carriers here protecting Wake. The issue is I don't really have anywhere that I can force him to react to. Because he just doesn't really have to. I could maybe have an invasion of the uh, Curals. But even at that point... Well, even at that, he could probably just like launch like a carrier out there. Two carriers. He has a few carriers. It depends, really. Oh no, we're going to get away. Uh, so we're going to get Darwin. Don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you keep trying. <laughs> oh dear. Now we'll get it one day. It's just too close to us. It's still 42. He does have tremendous amounts of power, but he doesn't have it all yet. And we may yet get lucky there. No solid takes. So we'll take Boella here. No, but on the question of Darwin, yep, absolutely going to take it. It's just a question of time. Uh, but what I intend to do is bombard the hell out of it, really. I'd like to bring some BBs down to this area. It might be worthwhile bringing in... Um, I don't know, maybe i bring Haruna down here, but I don't think it's worthwhile bringing Haruna down here. I think something with some decent firepower would be nice. I mean, the Nagato class could probably do some quite good work there, but we'll see. I intend to really have the Nagato class, sorry, um, probably sit over here or about the time here. The reason being I can release the heavy cruisers and just, yeah, have lots of air cover, lots of protection from like mines and subs and stuff like that, and essentially protect these bases from him coming in and rushing. Uh, AVD, he's definitely working on this area. He's up to something. He is a sneaky bugger. The good news is we are building this area up. We do have another sub moving down there too. Alright, and we do have this element of the 2nd Air Division moving over there. With plenty more supply. I sent Kako, uh, Keiko, uh, Natsushio, uh, Natsushio, Natsushio, and Fubuki, and Bordo, uh, down there to protect them. I don't like it being on one ship, but it should be okay. Torpedo Ordnance. So do we have second division here already? Yeah, so that's the rest of it. The good news is once they do arrive here, we'll have plenty of aviation support, which would be nice. Have you kept up with the upgrades for your ships? More or less. I think the last upgrades we had were for boot keys and the DMSs. Um, I've not checked for a little while what we have else to do. Is there another DD class? Then mine have been. 
Now, me and Infinite Monkey were talking a little while ago. We were talking about radar systems. Because um, there's actually something really intriguing. Let me see. Where is it? Where is it? Kind of weird, actually. Which one does it come under? I'm looking for radar. Search radar. Yeah, this is what I want to show here. Because I think as far as I can remember, the Tachi 6 and the Tachi 1 radar system have only been in production a month, if that. I can't remember when they become active, but it's only very recently. And the build rate is meant to be 4. But then you take a look at this and we've got 33 produced so far. Use 32. Myself and Infinite were talking about this saying that that shouldn't be if we understand how the systems work. Well, at least if I understand how the system's working. So it's like, for example, over here, the Tachi 6, it's like there's 19 and we have a build rate of 2. Which is intriguing. Our Japan builds to what you need. Hmm. I should remember it being said that they were something you'd have to stop out, but it might have been a misunderstanding, really. Ah, okay. Fair enough, then. If that's how it works, that's how it works. Got no problems with that. Um, we do have... Let's see. Artillery. Um, yeah, the good news is that we do have a bunch of units out here. The ones that can anyway. Um, have radar systems. So we do have radar in a good chunk of the Empire now. I was about to say that's a big bloody AA unit. <laughs> oh hell. Uh, cool. They've got those 15 centimeter guns though. Not dual purpose though. As far as I'm aware. Ah, okay. Um, alright, I guess, I don't know. Tachi 1, Tachi 6, isn't it? Let's take a look. Electronics. Tachi 6. Uh, 78k. Accuracy 45. Effect 45. Tachi 1. 45. 2020. I'm not exactly sure what the US and Allies will be using, but I imagine theirs are just better. Likely so. I mean, this is it. It's not great radar, but it's radar, and having radar is better than having no radar. Oh, yeah. Um, Burma has been quite the walkover, to be honest. The, the interesting thing about this game is... Um, and it's interesting, actually, Roland. So it seems like you haven't been uh, keeping up with this one, or, or you might be new to this one. We've had a tremendous amount of ass-kicking at sea. But then the ground campaign has been the complete opposite. It's really bizarre. I think it helps with fighter coordination, uh, cap coordination. It's quite useful, actually. I don't know if it helps with AAA. Ah, okay, that's interesting. Yeah, uh, we've defeated quite a lot over here in Burma. The entirety of the Burma garrison has more or less been... Well, yeah, it pretty much has been trapped and repeatedly squashed. We destroyed the 17th Division, I think it was, around here up in Goo. Uh, he did have a bunch of forces attempt to escape. He actually brought in the... Was it the 34th Tank Brigade? I can't remember which Tank Brigade it was. We brought in a Tank Brigade. And we've essentially destroyed it. It should be here. We just need to finish it off, really. Okay, so both RF gun battalions have arrived. That's good. Hey, Nerpog. That's a great name. 
Uh, China's going very well, actually. Essentially, all we're waiting for now is just units to move into position. That is quite honestly all it is now. Have these units follow in the same ops mode, move south. This unit over here moving slowly, very, very slowly. Uh, these forces I'm bringing back to Rangoon. I'll probably have them uh, possibly deployed into China, but I'll probably have them moved elsewhere. Though in fairness, it might be worthwhile to retain two divisions in Barber. We may yet do that, just simply to have a defense against anything that may show up. But I don't imagine he's going to have a lot of power. I mean, we're in reconnaissance over different bases over here now. Four bombers out here. Okay, seeing two units. Uh, 32 fighters there. Okay, so he's got a decent amount over here to critical. Ten auxiliaries. We've seen a tanker there and an MGB. Find two ships out this way. Okay. Right out. Won that base over there. I don't need a garrison here, do I? No, thankfully not. Hey, when you have those bases that require bloody garrisons, you're like, come on, really? Okay. I don't know what that unit is, but I'm going to send a tank regiment south to go ahead and deal with that. Ah, so the 34th Battalion has arrived. Good. Very good. 4th Tank Regiment is heading south. And they're heading across the river. Good. I just need to finish off these uh, British forces over here. The Burma Battalion, I think it was. We'll finish them off. Yeah, we are closing on Paoshan. I'm going to be running reconnaissance of Paoshan again shortly. But we're a couple days away from arriving at Paoshan. So we'll have Paoshan then. Which should be very nice. In China itself... Oh, um, it's Admiral Dadman. It is, yeah, well, there you go. It's Admiral Dadman on the One of the Pacific Forums. Uh, he's one of the moderators. So, yeah, he, he's been around the block quite a few times. He's very good with Wake. He's kicked our ass, um, is it three or four times now? He's really devilishly good. He cancelled our Pearl Harbor, which was a lot of fun. Uh, we are playing a campaign with essentially no rules. How you doing there, Just Good to have you, my man. Ah, there we go. So, four divisions arrived here. So, we'll go ahead and launch an attack there. Three times. I'm losing count now. <laughs> but, I mean, this is easy. Can't give up. Obviously, got to play smart, though. Right, what I'm trying to do here is surround these units, cut off all their ability to retreat. And that'd be excellent. Yeah, so, we do have our divisions over here. So, we are closing in now in Changsha. A couple days, they'll arrive at Changsha, which will allow me to move... Uh, troops around here pretty freely. Looking forward to that. Third army I'm moving to here so they can start planning for Hing Yang. Situation's not bad. I know you're going to be like, oh my god, just the world's over. <laughs> it's alright. Uh, we lost the troops on Wake, unfortunately, but we got the bombardment in, which was nice. Um, lost a couple bombers over there. But not that bad in reality. Just changes the situation. But I mean, we've lost a lot in this campaign. But we've gained a lot as well, so I'm pretty happy with that. I mean, we do have the entirety of Northern China, so I'm very, very happy with that. Oh, I don't have to garrison that. Good. But what is it going to take to get to those guys? That's rough terrain, and of course there's no bloody road. Because there wouldn't be. Uh, I do have that cavalry brigade. But then I need to garrison here for the Rumchi. I really wasn't hoping that would happen. Is there anything here? <laughs> Operation Ichigo, ah, uh, indeed. Is there anything here that I need to hold on to? I don't think it has any industry. No, it doesn't have any industry, it is just simply a... It doesn't even require a garrison. I'm going to have the tanks actually move back. They've got a hell of a long way to go. I can have some infantry brought up that way. Uh, we may just go ahead and leave one tank regiment to deal with this so that if they do move. Maybe. The weaker one, a Rumchi. We'll see. 
But yeah, you can see they've got over a, they've got over a thousand miles to go. At some distance. So there's no point wasting time to track down and destroy that. I can send some infantry just to take this and they can never be destroyed by bombers. Would have vastly preferred them to be destroyed outright. They can cause problems in the future, but they'll take a long time to move anyway. Rough's not so bad, but it'll still take time. Okay. Uh, Kashgar. Uh, it's worth about 20 points. There's no industry. I'm going to have a unit sent out that way. There is a unit actually already on the way. Yeah, there's no supply generation there as far as I'm aware. Uh, this unit is... Well, eventually we'll head to Kashgar. I think I do have one being sent out to Kashgar. Uh, Kashgar, yeah. They're 44 miles into that 966 mile journey. And this is it. It's almost a thousand miles. It's a long way. But eventually we'll take it. <laughs> In the far distant future. Okay. Right, that additional Mongol units have arrived over here. That's good news. I'll launch an attack here next turn. Uh, rough terrain, but they should be very low in supply. They may retreat over here. In fact, I'm going to hold off on that order. The reason being, if I move a unit here, I can block them. Let's see. Yeah, I might as well do that. Because that will... It is delaying that AV, but it's worthwhile to destroy a unit. Destroying units is exactly what we need to do out here. Uh, what's the road like? Secondary likely, so it's only four day. Four days. So it's added a couple days on to them moving to where they need to be, but that's okay. If I can destroy a... I think it's a core as well. Yeah, 13,000 men here. Uh, if I can destroy those two units, that's well worthwhile doing. It's better to waste the time now than have to waste the time chasing them down. Yeah, she shouldn't have to get them, likely. So, 32 still. It's definitely not 9, 6. 1 and 2. Yeah, so still remaining as it has been. Okay. Um, yes, I need to get a unit there. Just need a couple AV from somewhere. That'll do. Yeah, we'll go there then. So we control that hex side. Well, I don't control that hex side, but there is a unit here. Ah, uh, still one here. Hmm. Maybe I should not have cancelled those <laughs> movements. Uh, still a few months away there, just. Still a few months, my friend. Okay. So I'll order a deliberate attack here then. I just don't like having units with lots of disabled, but they should be okay. We do have a planning bonus. I do need to take this base. As soon as I can take this base, I can build it up then. Yeah, we've got that there. They do have ample bomber support as well. I mean, in fairness, there's what? Uh, 249 bombers, 243 here. Sorry. Get rid of the fighters. There's 204 ready bombers. And we have had to move some bombers elsewhere to be honest, to fit them all here. Well, to be able to fit these guys in. But we're only 8% away from a size 7 airfield, so that's quite good. I'll be able to fit more bombers on the airfield then. But obviously we'll be moving elsewhere. The good news is once we get the airfield set up, I can run pretty continuous. That is that. Uh, where are we talking about? Oh, I know. Is this where we're going to have this combat? <laughs> this argument again? <laughs> if Chang is worthless, it's only worth something with the context. Like, I wouldn't give a shit about a Chang if there wasn't a context for me to give a shit about it. Now, we want this here, so we can build that up to then bomb here. These guys aren't too far away. 
32 there. They're not making great uh, strides though each day, but they are still making strides. He did move a second core over here and was unsuccessful in that. I may have... Well, this unit's moving. It's moving fairly slowly. I may have it moved in there, but I'm not too sure if I even need to do so. I'll keep umming and ahhing about that until I have to make a decision. But yeah, I mean, that 66 core that was here has been essentially wasted for a long time. But that's good for us, bad for him. So I do have the other element of the 6th Division returning. What we're going to do then is essentially wait for divisional reinforcements to arrive here at Changsha. I'm going to have forces actually collect themselves over here and then we'll cross over to Heng Yang. And we'll be able to take that. And then I'll be able to bring about the end of this area here pretty quickly. Okay. Oh, I see. Ah. Uh... Well, around Wake, we're going to play some sort of a nutritional game. I do have the submarines being essentially funneled to this area. We're going to just essentially try to make his life unbearable here until he has to either retreat or we get lucky. I'd be quite happy with getting lucky. Uh, we bo tried bombing Wake for the first time. That didn't go well because there's LR cap in it. But okay, we learned to lesson. We did go in there and bombard it with the heavy cruisers, which has been shown to work. Obviously, they do need to be refueled and repaired, but I think it's worthwhile. I expected there to be a bombardment. It shows you... Um, he's quite cautious about this at the moment. Oh, I was going to check on had they been detected or not. Answer is no. Good. What is the fatigue levels like? So I did run two here on LR cap. Okay, not bad. They were lower last turn, but they're not that high now. I don't have to run any LR cap. Obviously, we don't have to. <laughs> we don't have to get about uh, about any units at wake now, so we can kind of rest our dudes, which is useful. I did fly cap from here. You can see that did put their uh, fatigue up. Not tremendously so, but that's good. I mean, I'm quite happy to use Tongi. Um, It's an interesting one. Now he has these guys over here moving west, which is really intriguing. Hmm. I think what we want to do then is possibly move within range of Wake. Bomb him at Wake if we can get the ships there. I don't imagine we'll actually be able to get them because they'll probably move out pretty quickly. Can Tangi, uh, Tongi? Oh, Tongi. Um, it actually officially can't house anything besides fortifications. It can be built up, it's just very, very expensive. And the Autoc um, is much the same, but it's just, <laughs> just tremendously expensive to build up. That's the issue you find out here. In reality, the closest airfield is in Iltok. Mark Silent is 19 hexes away. In Iltok is 14. Tongi is 9. If Tongi could actually house an airfield properly, then that'd be great. It kind of can. We can use, like, float aircraft, which we are doing so. And these guys are really good. Uh, their ASW is the program we've been working on here across the board, which is running really well. This is going to hurt me. I feel like I'm going to lose these guys at some point. Oh, wow, they are well and truly spotted. <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, we have fighters in Japan. Not great fighters, but we have fighters in Japan. Biggest in Japan. Uh, so this is 176 there. Obviously, going to be increasing the size of our zero complements over time. Uh, 59 zeros there. Uh, Oscars as well. Nates. Eventually we'll have Nates essentially um, phased out. Yeah, fighters there. Um, might be more over here at Osaka. Uh, here. Some zeros there. Some Nates over there. There's fighters in Japan. 
We're just building them up. Like, we have a zero over here that we built up in time. Ah. Uh, I mean, I could have a thousand key 27s, they'll do fuck all. <laughs> if I could have, like, a zero in 46, I could count myself mm, marginally more favoured than having nothing. But. <laughs> It, it's not a, it's not a big deal. 7.7s are useless now. They're going to be useless then. I don't know, I might tickle the enemy. They might die from laughter. So, they have their values. Okay. Now we're doing pretty good though. Also we have our defeats from Wake Plenty, but that's okay. Do we have these units moving out here? It's only 55 AB, but I'm quite happy just to bombard um, the armored city of the ACSM 8. End of the year, early next year. Uh, what am I looking for? Alright. Yeah, they should arrive about that point. So, end of the year, 42. Early 43. That's so when we should see them. Looking forward to having more dojo. Helen's on its way. Key 83 is then. Do we have another 6? No. God damn it. It's been taking its time though. <laughs> yeah. It's a flying coffin now. <laughs> It's just got marginally, uh, marginally more of a chance now. Okay. Um, I forget how it works, but what is it when it advances and reduces the arrival time by? Is it a week? Is it a month? I think it's a month. I forget how. I think it, it reduces it by a month. Every time it ticks to 100, it reduces it by a month or something like that. Uh, smarter people than I have worked out it. Uh, worked out the arrival date. I could work it out, I just I can't be arsed. <laughs> I can't attack there. Why is that? That's weird. Very weird. Oh, it's because it's disabled. God damn it. That's fine. I could do it taking the regiment over here to the bank to destroy these units here. Quite happy to do so. Okay. Yeah, we're doing pretty good. I mean, this is it. The only issues that we're having really are around Wake, which we've been having for a while. Mindanao. Well, we do have our forces here in Mindanao. I do have a division. I may go ahead and attack with that division at some point in the near future, actually. I'm pretty content with the situation, uh, situation as this. How you doing there, Kak? Good to have you, my friend. Yeah, uh, we're going to be finishing off Bandawang shortly enough. A couple days and then these guys will arrive. And then I can have some reinforcements sent to Mindanao. And then we'll finish off Mindanao in a cleaner fashion. 22 there. At least when they arrive, we can begin bombarding. Yeah, East India is more or less done. A couple of items I need to do some cleanup on. But it's nearly done. Which is nice. We'll have Naval Guard land over here at Boon event to march down here to Port Moresby. And then we'll take that. Uh, it's annoying that they move out of the way at this point in time, but that's okay. Excuse me. So. Units arriving back. I would just have to do some reorganization. That's a shame. We tried our best. Obviously, we would have preferred things to have gone better, but hey. I didn't expect to have to fail three times. <laughs> but maybe the fourth, maybe the fifth will get it. Maybe even the sixth. We'll see. Uh, the carriers are there. Well, at least a carrier is there. Very likely they're all there. Or at least the majority of them. Uh, but we do have a plenty of submarines on their way to just essentially engage him. I just want to try and drive him out of this area. Um, eventually we'll catch him. Eventually he may take some damage. He only has so much ASW. I'm pretty happy to take the risk. I can build new subs. He can, of course, build new carriers, but I'm 
pretty eager to sink them at this point in time. Well, it's not like the luck of trying. Uh, carry battles in this game are quite interesting. I know a lot of people probably think of me being too cautious. Um, I prefer to be aggressively defensive. <laughs> no, we don't have any subs on the US coast at this moment in time. Uh, we are going to have a reorganization of subs. We had them deployed over here to actually uh, figure out where his carriers were. What we'll do then after this operation gets his actual carriers, since we've actually located them, is uh, we'll have them brought back, refueled, repaired, and then we'll reorganize them, send out long range subs to the US coastline. In fairness, we do have hefty targets over here. We have to take those on. But yeah, I'll run a couple subs out that way. I'd like to get a couple subs running out this way too. Uh, what I'll do is take this base over here. And then what I'll do is probably have like an AS and an AO. AKE, whatever can actually rearm us up. It's just an AS actually, so AS and AO. And we'll have it move down this way. Just enough to drop some fuel off. And then what I do is have these subs refueled, rearmed. And then we'd have the AS, AO move back. And then we'd have the subs continue to operate out here. Distance is a sucky thing. So it's got two subs over here, which is intriguing. I'm surprised he's kept these submarines in here for so long because, well, he's caused us problems, but where's it going to rearm? Where's it going to refuel? And they are, in theory, under attack by these jakes every day. Here you can see that they actually gained experience here today. They gained experience here today. They don't have a huge bomb load, but eventually they'll hit. Okay. Uh, we're looking pretty good then. No. My elf goal. Where's my elf goal? Now, he did have reports of the B5N2, so he's obviously aware. But we're aware of him. Shotlands. Okay. I thought I'd be up to something there. Mitsubishi half or three advances A and uh, R and D. Uh Aces and eight advances R and D, nice. Gato takes on Jake replacement. Ah oh, there we go, a couple more units there receiving. Coolion. Oops. Vladivostok, San Francisco, Ogden, Seattle, Annette Island, that's what I'm not familiar with. 5997. No NR signal targets to be some random unit in China. Tends to bloody well be. Have I cleared uh, sort of iron mines? Not yet. Get in there, though. <laughs> I've just terminated. <laughs> that was pretty amazing. Uh, we do have the Golden Road, actually, which we've been working on. Uh, my good friend Infinite Monkey has been doing a tremendous job regarding the actual ASW pilot training program, just in general pilot training. He handles that for me, which is nice, saves me a lot of time, allows me to do a lot more of the streaming side. But we do have plenty. Uh, essentially what we do is we have them here. There we go. And we have them more or less guided in the entirety of the way. Uh, here we are. Pretty much all the way back to Japan. We'll make use of other aircraft as well for the SW. We'll see. Uh, no, our radio in Delta is going to suck forever. Just going to suck. <laughs> oh dear. Okay. So I do have the 38th Division, the division that has taken part in quite a few actions, actually. Quite a few indeed. I got a tick. I did have some. Oh, I forgot to send them. They should head to. Well, let's see. 
five, four, eight, four, four, eight. <laughs> um, I'll have them sent to Nagasaki, I think. Maybe even Tokyo. 10-8. 10, 10 10 I guess we'll have them sent to Tokyo. Uh, for safety, I'll have them sent to Nagasaki and then rail across to Tokyo. There's a bunch of APs I could do with views and elsewhere, too. playing with very little rules in this campaign, so we are doing things that we shouldn't normally be able to do. Which is fun. But it works both ways. We had some very interesting trickery off, <laughs> off the coast here. I remember those days. Those were not fun days. Uh, I still remember the day that we could have destroyed the Flying Tigers on the airfield here. But he moved them out that day. Lucky bugger. Okay. Partial garrison there. It's incredible. Naval Vayak. No. I'm going to have them repaired. And then I'll probably have them sent out elsewhere. They were in Manila. Uh, these are the guys that were in the Philippines the 65th and the 21st. I just want to have them sent somewhere that they can just repair quickly, take on replacements quickly. And I think what I might go ahead and do with them is possibly have them garrison maybe some of these islands out here. Maybe uh, have them garrison Ma uh, Marianas somewhere. I've got to figure out what I want to do with them. But I want to have them somewhere where they can actually begin to build up. I think Marcus Island is... I don't know. Will Marcus Island be an island that we want to hold on to? Will it be one that will come under attack. Uh, it's very likely that it could do, to be honest, obviously with the fact that he has Wake, assuming he has Wake in the future, he could go ahead and attack that. Would he want to? Yeah, he could. And to be honest, I, I wouldn't be shocked if he did or not. It'll be one of the lower priority ones, but it'd be worthwhile sending some men there, I suppose, just to make it painful. Something to bear in mind. So after China, India, Australia, or California. <laughs> I don't know. I still stray between Soviet Union and India. Likelihood is India. It depends. Probably India. Probably India. I just like to keep people on their toes. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot going for us for India. I'm not going to attack India until I do have essentially forces available for a full-blown invasion. We don't want to go half-assed. Uh, well, it should arrive this turn. Um, I don't know what will happen with that. But, I don't know. I think it's a static unit, so I have no idea. I just think it won't arrive until we take Wake. If it doesn't arrive, I don't know. That's some nice AV though. They seem to have... Uh, well, we did have some actually. Hmm. Well, if we landed in the US, we could land in Portland, I think it is, and destroy a lot of CVEs, but... I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know if we'd be able to get away with it. Uh, 
I uh, just simply waiting for the forces to arrive. I mean, China is more or less a shell at this point. And the reason why I'm not attacking over here at Kyanko is I'm just gonna, either going to wait for the reinforcements to arrive. Or I might attack before they do arrive. But I'm waiting essentially to have bombers set up. And then I'm going to look forward to bombing him each day. I think it's worthwhile being able to bombard him while he is here. Yeah, people are landing in California. People have taken Portland. You can destroy like shitloads of CDs there. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we'll be pushing on Power Shan soon. We took Quail in recently. Division over here is going to be dealing with these units here. I am flying in the Yokosuka <laughs> to act as a garrison here because they're really useful for that. Probably find another unit then just to make sure we have enough for a garrison, but I probably don't need it. Uh, yep, so there we're in the garrison here. And then we do have the 38th Division, which will march over here to the north of Tigun. Yeah, the, uh, the US does gain uh, emergency re reinforcements. Ah, a Kyanko. I don't know, to be honest. Probably substantial. But I mean, this is it. I'm pretty happy to keep on bombing him. Keep, keep on bombarding him. I don't even necessarily have to win the Battle of Kyanko. Simply holding his troops there is worthwhile to a degree. Ultimately, what I want to do is have forces able to coalesce around about the same time. I want to obviously have Kuming and this area here. I want to have this area, and then we can move on to this area. The fighting is really going to be for Chunking. So, I'm happy to weaken his forces. We'll get there in the end. Do you build forts and islands you need to defend Japan like now? Ah. Uh. I'm going to say a hard yes. I'm going to invest in that stock. I don't know, man. I'm going to say yes. Probably yes to whatever you're saying. Uh, level 4 to 6. Ugh, I don't know. But the thing to bear in mind is for every level of fort he builds, he's using supply. So, I don't know. Uh, maybe. It may just hasten his end, if anything. Hmm. But I'm looking forward to when we can bring bombers in. Having plenty of bombers here will do a lot of work against him. And then also we'll attack. Yeah, so he's not moving. So we'll attack him next turn. Make sure they're all planning here. Well, they're not attacking anyway. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, this is it. But in the south... I don't know. He's trying to gain some interest in one, in all honesty. Uh, Kui Yang would be a difficult one to take. But if we can just concentrate divisions, it'll fall. Um, it's easier to fight the bases than it is to fight for these random hexes. He's got a couple of units over here. And what I'm hoping we'll be able to do is essentially just... I mean, especially in this area, be able to mass enough divisions and have the air power to really drive through him, which would be quite good. It doesn't have that defense and depth that he should do. That's the thing. He doesn't have that. And I don't know why. Uh, he's been gaining back a few points as of recently. Well, that's okay. We'll manage it. I think what we'll probably do in the future, actually, I think regarding those BBs now that I think about it, is uh, we'll probably have the BBs like bombard Australian cities for the strategic value. Should be able to manage something like that. We shall see. I recall seeing the Hermes around this area, so I imagine that the RN carries around here somewhere. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, um, issue is over here at Kyanko. We have to get the aviation support in there as well. Uh, we'll have here. We'll have our Chang uh, likely next turn. And then I can use that. We're just getting the aviation support to where it needs to be, to be honest. 
That's the only problem. Excuse me. Ah, uh, that's quite literally the only problem. It'll probably fortify the living crap out of these cities, but, well, I don't know. Uh, probably chunking. I don't know. Maybe. Sometimes he doesn't do what you'd expect him to do, but even if he fortifies it, I mean, I'll, I'll expect it to be fortified. I'll have to expect it to be fortified, because I think chunking starts with pretty hefty fortifications anyway. Uh, but if it does fortify it further, then okay. I'm quite happy just to keep bombarding him and keep bombing him. Eventually his troops will give out. And we'll be able to mass enough forces to be able to attack. And the case being for us, once we do attack, we'll probably take tremendous losses. But if we attack and win China, then that's the Battle of China over. At that point, you can recover those losses and you've got the entirety of China left, which is excellent. You probably hold on to it the rest of the game. Uh, so I'm pretty happy to play that game. But uh, these divisions are a couple days from Changsha. Once they arrive at Changsha, we'll march on uh, in India. Well, we see 66 fighters there. We see 32 over here. Uh, Chunking's only times two. Urban light times two bonus. Same as Changsha. Urban light. So we'll manage. Hi. I can just concentrate bombers against the artillery against a uh, persistent bombardment will eventually wear him down. And especially supply generation is not exactly going to be very good. He's been without fuel now for quite some time. Not a tremendous amount of time, but some time at least. So eventually that heavy industry will shut down. He'll be left with just the resources and the light industry. Which produces supply, but not a lot. He's lost quite a lot of the cities here that would produce uh, that supply that he desperately needs. Taking Kunming would be great. We managed to cut the Burma Road pretty quickly, which was very nice. Okay, so... We'll call it about here. I fully intended to go to sleep about an hour and a half ago. <laughs> but anyway, it was worth it to have a turn right, wasn't it? You guys are patient. So very patient with me, and I thought, well, I've got to reward you for that. Uh, but I'm moving out into a apartment next month. It is going to be quite costly. If you guys do enjoy my content and would like to support me as a content creator, that would be really quite appreciated. Um, I do intend to vary my content in the future, actually. I'd like to do different things. I really had something of a soul-searching thing in the last few months, really. Uh, the reason being, obviously, since starting the university, I found that my time has been stretched dramatically. And it makes you think, well, what do I actually want to do? What's actually worth doing? What do people actually enjoy? And what do I actually enjoy? And I think what I enjoy most is... Because I don't do any... I don't do any editing. I don't particularly do things like chase subscribers or chase views or chase chase cash, do I? I'd like to think not. Well, if I do, then I'm doing a bad job. Um, I think what I enjoy personally is playing just games I like and just talking to people. I enjoy that. As a bunch of you out there who have contacted me over time, just random messages on Discord, Steam, stuff like that, Facebook sometimes even, and um, I really enjoyed talking to people. Quite happy about that. I did a game of the RPG called Lancer about a, ooh, two weeks ago at this point now. And I'm not a great GM, but that was fun. That was really nice to be able to meet people that have been following me for years. Let's see if you could be following me for five months, five minutes, sorry, or five years. Or not at all, frankly. I'm just happy to play and talk with people with like-minded interests. Uh, but I think in the future, obviously because of the degree that I'm doing, obviously I'm doing a history degree and a Japanese degree. Uh, the studies I'm going there just, it's very hard. It's very, but well, it's not, it's not hard as such. Learning Japanese isn't hard as such. It's more so, it takes a lot of effort. There's a lot of work that needs to be done. It's one of those of where you have to study every day, and every day you get a little bit better, but it never gets easier in a way because you're always having to study new things. But you do get better, you do get better. Uh, there's a meme actually from Bojack Horseman, which is quite funny. It's one of my favorite parts of that show. It's like, uh, you gotta do it, yeah, it, it's like it's hard. But you got to do it every day, and every day it gets a little bit easier or something like that. But it's still hard. I can't remember what it is, but it's like it's really good actually. 
Um, I know it's a bit long-winded. I enjoy having a long-winded one every now and then. But I, with the degree that I'm doing, I think probably what I'd like to do in the future regarding content is... Um, I'd like to try and specialise in East Asian history. I think that's the way I'd like to go. I'm a real big fan of late antiquity. So who knows? Maybe a bit of a mix there. But we'll see. Eventually, God willing, I will spend a year in Japan. Obviously improve my Japanese as well for a degree and continue there. I think what I'd like to do is go ahead and uh, either do a postgraduate in Japan or teach English in Japan and I'd eventually go for something like that. But I don't know. I don't know. I think I'd like to do something more meaningful, really. Oh yeah, Ch uh, Chinese history would be quite interesting. Quite interested in Korean. Quite interested in it all, really. I'd like to consider myself like a non-Eurocentric uh, historian. I use the term historian very lightly. I don't consider myself personally a historian until I've done something worth that. But I, um, it's a long-winded, long-winded, um, <laughs> way to say I don't really know what I want to do with the channel. Ah, yeah, Silk Road's really interesting. Ah, it's a long-winded say, uh, long-winded way saying I don't know what I want to do with the channel. I'll still play one of the Pacific. I just don't know what else I want to do. I think over time I might eventually figure out what I'd like to do. I'd love to be able to do like some sort of podcast one day. Of something actually meaningful. Like not one of those podcasts where you just talk shit. I talk shit anyway. But you know something that's actually meaningful. Something that is actually worth doing. I do it in a non-partisan way really as well. Try to be as unbiased as possible. But we'll see. We'll see. Ah, but that's a long, long winded speech over uh, back to the original point I am moving to an apartment next month it's going to be very costly <laughs> and there's not really many jobs around at the moment so if you guys do enjoy my content it would be much appreciated if you would become something like a patron or if you do have Amazon Prime just subscribe in here on Twitch it doesn't cost you anything uh, help support me that'd be awesome uh, you have less than 25 I don't know what that means but I'd love to answer you just. My favourite Frenchie. He's you and another guy from Bordeaux that I really like. But I. Uh, until next time! Arigato gozaimasu! And I see I'll see you guys later. Uh, I don't know, probably, probably Matarashi. I don't know what I want to do after 27 year old. Ah, that's cool, man. You'll get there. Uh, well, this is it. I'm still 25 now. <laughs> of course. All year. Until March. You're just going to do something, haven't you? I suppose at the end of the day. Even if you don't know what you're doing. Even if you don't know particularly where it's going to end up. You'd be quite surprised just how far you can get. How far you can get by just doing things really. No, I hope you have a happy 29th birthday. I bet. Just have a good one, my man. I'd send you a cake if I could. Have a good one, man. Okay, so good night, everybody. See you next time. <laughs>